you used to read a lot and you loved it, but life got in the way. Work gets busy, school sucks the joy out of it, and our attention spans get worse. But still, you know deep down that you want your old reading habit back, as well as all the joy and treasure it brings to your life. So how can we slowly reform that and re-enter reading after a long period away from it? I went through that same experience. I had a bad slump after school and the joy of reading was sucked out of me. But I applied these 14 tips to re-enter it and slowly reform that habit. And now I read every day easily. This is a tip for students who feel like they don't have the time to read. That when they do sit down and read, they feel guilty that they could be studying instead. And the solution to that is to make them somewhat interconnected. And it's to overlap your books that you read in your spare time with your studies. No one wants to be reading a textbook in their spare time, obviously. But at the same time, you might want to feel like you should study instead of reading. So the easiest way around that is to find books that have some sort of loose connection to what you study in school, but also are interesting and refreshing enough to keep you in and keep you absorbed and make it feel different. So you find, what could I read that is gives me a bigger picture on my studies? Is there something related? Is there something that expands upon an idea within them? I study biology and to do this, to hit two birds with one stone, I read books on electricity in the human body. I read books on ecology, anthropology, sociology. And yes, while they weren't directly related, the picture, the bigger picture I got in those books allowed me to understand what I learned in school better. And I didn't feel guilty about it because I knew I was again, hitting two birds with one stone, and I was staying productive in both regards. The second tip is to start small and be humble, because when we want to re-enter our old reading habit, we sometimes get a bit bold and try and dive headfirst into the, the heavy literature, like uh, Aristotle or Jane Austen or Dostoevsky, all the, the big meaty books that take a lot of effort and energy to read. And while that's a great goal, that jump can be just too big, from going to nothing to heavy literature. So you want to take time to ease into it more. Maybe start with easier books, books like what you might call cheap fiction or easy thrillers to read. And there's nothing bad in reading those, because while they won't be the most insightful books you read, maybe, it just helps you get back into the rhythm of it. Get back into what it means to sit down and read and to actually digest what the author's saying. And even if it's the most cheap romance or anything, anything that you wouldn't read normally, that's okay, because as long as it's easy, it allows you to reform that habit and to get easy wins early on. And after you've got back into that cycle, that habit of reading, then you can start getting into the more heavy stuff. Because if you jump straight into that, you might feel frustrated and disheartened that you're not maybe as good as you used to be. Your focus isn't as good or your ability to comprehend was compromised. So if you start small and build up, you'll have a much more sustainable foundation for having a strong reading habit again. Now, this is a rare tip I don't really see anywhere, but it's if you go to a bookshop and you just browse, you don't even have to buy anything, you just browse. I always find that when I do that, my appetite for reading is like, it skyrockets. And I'm not sure why. I think just being surrounded by many books and all these interesting things you want to read, it gives you that like desire to just run home and read. And like, I never buy anything there. I just flick through the shelves, look at interesting books, but suddenly I'm, I'm so desperate to just go home and continue reading. And it's like the best source of instant motivation. And of course we need discipline for the long run, but it always helps to have that help in the early stages if you're trying to reform your habit. And the second benefit is that if, you may be, if you're maybe lost in direction, you don't know what to read, you don't know what books to pick, then a bookshop is the perfect place to discover that. Like you could be attracted to books on the shelf that stand out to you, or you find something interesting that you buy on the spot and you go home and read. But in general, bookshelves, sorry, bookshops are a, an excellent place to kind of get into the zone of reading. And who knows, you could even stay there and continue your book. Number four is important, and you probably heard it a lot, but it's to be willing to stop reading when you feel like it. And that means in the early stages of forming a new habit, we don't want to make it tedious. We want to make it as fun, as engaging as possible. And as soon as that becomes a chore, and it becomes something that we have to force ourselves to do, then we risk being frustrated and eventually like slowing down and stopping altogether. So the solution to that is if a book, especially nonfiction, if a book doesn't engage you within say 50 pages, it's okay to leave it down. It's okay to save it for later or to pick up a new book in its stead. But the point is we don't want to feel like we're obligated to 
sit down and finish reading a single book because we're trying to build a habit here not trying to finish a book the only note of caution i would make with this is obviously fiction is it takes some time to get into the story sometimes if you're reading fiction you might want to give it more of a chance maybe give it more t time to engage you but if it still doesn't like after 100 pages then <clears throat> it's clearly not worth it so you can you can put it down and read a book that you are more engaged in because that's what we're looking for. Now, number five is an interesting tip that I've never applied myself because I've never felt the need to do it, but I find it a very interesting idea. And it's to stack the audiobook on top of your regular reading because apparently that helps you focus more. And what do I mean by that? It's where well, you have the, the physical book as you would normally, but on top of that, you find the audiobook for it and you listen to it at the same time. It's almost as if you're being read to and you can track the, the words on the page as the audiobook reads them. And apparently that like dynamic helps you just stay focused on the words and it helps your eyes stay fixed and not move around and regress a lot. So maybe give it a try if you feel like you lack focus and that's what's stopping you from getting into reading. Number six relates to school and how you might have stopped reading because school kind of sucked the joy out of it. And at least for me, that was the case. I, I was sick of reading because, and this ties back to this point, I was reading something that I was not engaged in or something I didn't care about. A lot of the times when we are assigned reading in school, it's something we have no interest in whatsoever. It's like some completely irrelevant topic to us that we know we're never gonna use again. So why the hell would we focus and want to learn? There's no reason. So to unlearn that attitude and do the exact opposite, we want to read things that have a, a purpose behind them. We want some sort of inner meaning to drive our reading. In general, yes, but also each specific book we choose. So we want to find books that we're going to use somehow. We're going to, we want to find books that we find interesting and truly interesting, not what someone else says. Because I see this trend on online a lot, and I talk about it sometimes, but it's how you get those self-development book pages who constantly, constantly recommend the same 30 book recommendations. And it frustrates me every time I see that because it's like, I'm sorry, David Goggins. I'm sorry, four hour work week. I'm sorry to all these books, but it's not for everyone. And not everyone cares. And the fact that you see them repeat so often, it makes you feel like as a new reader, you have to, it's like obligated reading. You have to read those books to be a reader. And it's not true. You have to read what speaks to you, find out what interests you. And one of the, my favorite ways to do that was to write down your interests, like be as specific as you can. And as descriptive, like your specific interests, what speaks to you. And then you go on based on that and find the best books of those interests. And that way you find books that speak to you and have you have that purpose to continue reading, unlike in school. Now, number seven is to schedule time to read because normally in our life, when we get busy, reading is the first thing we drop because it's some low commitment activity. It's not very important, but we can change that by reimagining what reading is and placing it higher in the list of priorities. And the easiest way to do that, and I did this and it worked really great, like it got me so much more consistent, and it's to schedule your reading time. I use Google Calendar, I block out a chunk of time, I think it's 10.30 to 11.30 or around then at night, and it's reading time. And I let, I let nothing get in the way of that. So that gives me the priority I need to, to focus on it. Because if I don't schedule it in anywhere, it's going to be left to the side because something else will happen. Maybe there's work to do, maybe there's school stuff, maybe there's errands. But if, if I know it's there in the calendar, I know that there's no excuse because I have to sit down and read now. And it's great. It works really well. Now, you don't have to do it in the night like I do, but as long as you schedule that block of time anywhere during the day, you'll feel more obliged to stick to it because you've set it aside and said for this hour or half an hour or whatever, reading is my priority and I will do it. Now, number eight, I love this tip. It's to carry a book around wherever you go. And this is, this is crazy because if I asked you now, are there ever moments in your life where you're waiting or you're commuting? And you say, of course there are. Like every day we spend 10, 20 minutes, a few times a day, either waiting for someone, maybe it's a gap between classes, maybe it's a lunch break, maybe it's a, a 20 minute bus drive or something. And we're always left to those periods of downtime. 
and what we do with those matters because that adds up and you've heard a million times that even 15 minutes of reading a day is good for you and it's true but if you don't have a book on you at those times you have nothing to read so what i like to do is carry some sort of light non-fiction and it has to be non-fiction i carry some light non-fiction around so that if i have those pockets of time i can use them for reading and that way even if i don't schedule any reading time into my day i have those periods of downtime where i can get a good chunk of reading done and it's really priceless people overlook these periods but they are really useful and i say it has to be non-fiction because if you pick a fiction book for the one you carry around everywhere you're going to be jumping in and out a lot and you won't be able to be engaged into the narrative so i recommend light non-fiction something you can read a small chapter of get the value out and then leave it and read it tomorrow or and, and it should be something that you can understand easily it shouldn't be like too challenging of course number nine is to reread old books that you know you love because that's the, uh, that's one of the challenges we have when we're trying to reform a habit we read books that we're not too sure we like and we're kind of readjusting our tastes if we have books from maybe our childhood even or from years ago from our time in school that we remember reading and we knew we loved why not pick those it's like with the light fiction i said earlier the first books you read to get back into the habit they don't have to be insightful at all they don't have to be like big heavy books that teach you a lot they can just be anything anything that gets you reading anything that gets you back in the cycle so you might ask yourself, what were those books in your school time that you found most nostalgic or you loved? And just pick them up. And it's like, there's no trial and error involved because you know you like them. For me, this was uh, the curious incident of the dog in the night time. And like, I still reread that every now and then today because I love it. It's just part of my childhood. I know it's not really going to teach me anything, but so what? It gets me reading and it enables you to build that foundation for more reading in the future. Number 10 is to set a timer. And this is like a, it's kind of a self-improvement productivity tip that you see everywhere, but it works for reading too. And it's, you set the timer for two, three, four, five minutes, some sort of low commitment. You set the timer and say, I'm gonna read for this amount of time. You start the timer, it's just a few minutes. You start reading. And there's two outcomes at the end of that, when it hits zero. The first is you have engaged with the book and you continue reading. You know, screw the timer, I'm going to read more. I'm going to read to when I'm sick. The second outcome is the timer hits zero. You don't feel like you're really immersed into the book. You feel restless. You want to go do something else. And that's okay. You go and do something else. But the point was that you enabled yourself to sit down in the first place by making it a low commitment, but then you read more. And that's the ideal solution. And, you know, if you weren't engaged in it, it doesn't matter. You're you'll do it again tomorrow or later and you'll have that uh, the other chance to get gripped into the book so the point is to reduce the the friction between sitting down and actually picking up the book itself to so make the starting part easy because that's usually the hardest for any of us now this isn't for everyone i know but it's number 11 is to track your reading progress it works well i think because if you update your reading your pages per day or your the time you spent reading Having that tangible, visible goal can help motivate you. I want to read 10 books, sorry, I want to read 10 pages today because I get to update it later. And like you see that tick go up and it's, it's quite satisfying. And I do that. I use Goodreads to just keep a rough log of what I'm reading. And does it help? Not really. Is it fun? Yes, it is. So why not? The only risk there is, is you become focused on finishing the book rather than learning a lot. And that, you know, that risks like you're always seeing into the future and not focusing on what you're reading now. But for the moment, if we're trying to form a new habit, it doesn't really matter. The point is to get you motivated to continue. And maybe you can reassess that if you need it in the future. Number 12 is great. And it's you have to make the book speak to you in a way. You have to record your experiences and you have to have a dialogue with the book. Things that don't apply to us, we don't deem as important. If, if the author is just lecturing to us, we don't really care. But if we can somehow get the words that he's saying and apply them to our own life, then we not only remember everything more vividly, but we feel more engaged. So the easiest way to do this is to record what you felt in your during your reading. And that can be as simple as asking questions. It can be recording your emotions at the time. Like, 
what did you feel when you read this? Was it something outraging or was it something that really resonated with you? And all these feelings somehow take the book's pages and it spills over into reality, the reality you occupy. And that that sort of intimacy between the, the book and the author, sorry, the, re the reader and the author, that can make it much more engaging and fun. And fun things we like to do. So we build that habit. Now, number 13 is an obvious one, and it's to eliminate distractions. And the main one, of course, will be our phones. By far, the easiest way to do that is to, is when you want to read, you switch your phone off and you move it to another room. That's simple. Because once your phone is not in your field of vision, you're not gonna be asked to go and get it. Like the phone will be away. And there's that barrier between you picking up the phone, getting distracted. And a lot of people like to put on a uh, white noise to focus. But here's the risk with that. Your phone is right there playing the white noise. It, all it takes is one click onto Twitter or YouTube or whatever to, for you to get derailed from your reading. So my favorite thing is to just remove technology away from the area and focus on the reading. And of course, if, if you have a, a noisy environment, maybe your family disrupts you, maybe there's noise outside, then the best solution to that is to find where you're most focused and find where you can zone in and lock in on the book. Maybe it's late at night or early or in a different room of the house, or maybe you can buy earplugs, like anything that helps you focus and not get distracted so easily. The last one, tip number 14 is accountability. And that can look like many different things. It can be as, I suppose, extreme as a book club, but it can also be you choose to read with a friend who is interested in the same things as you or a family member, a sibling maybe. And by doing that, you you give each other kind of this extrinsic motivation to continue reading. So you can then talk about it afterwards. So it gives you that extra drive you need. And you know, this can look like many different things. It can be in real life, it can be online even. And sometimes it's okay to use like Goodreads to, to make friends on there and to show off that you're reading something. Because sometimes I think, okay, everyone can see that I'm not really making up uh, progress in this book. And that kind of gets me, it's like, oh, I really should be reading that. So sometimes that extrinsic motivation is actually really good. And it pressures you to keep reading and to form that habit. So that's 14 tips. And I hope they, at least one or two of them will stick with you and maybe help you in the existing habit you have. But especially if you feel like you're missing out on what you used to have. And you used to love having that reading habit. But after it fell off, like I really hope you can build, use these tips to to reform that and rebuild it. And you'll find that it's just the best thing that could have happened to your life again. So I hope those helped and let me know if you have any others in the comments. So yeah, thanks for watching.